Hello and welcome to another Sutton Brain Hub video. My name is Charlie and today I'll be taking you through the important arterial structure, the Circle of Willis. The Circle of Willis is an important arterial junction on the inferior aspect of the brain. It supplies blood to over 80% of the brain and arises from the two internal carotid arteries. Firstly, let's orientate ourselves with the image on the screen. So we're looking at the underside of the brain, the top of the screen represents the front of the brain, and the bottom of the screen represents the back. I will now go through each artery that makes up this anatomical structure. I recommend pausing the video and drawing each artery as we come across them. That way, at the end of the video, you will have a complete labelled diagram. Let's start with the two most anterior arteries, the anterior cerebral arteries. These are seen running parallel at the top of the screen and can be found above the optic nerves. Posteriorly and laterally, we have the middle cerebral arteries. These are the most common pathologically affected blood vessels in the brain. These arteries supply blood to the majority of the lateral surface of the brain hemispheres, including the primary motory and somatosensory cortical areas. A small artery that's important not to forget is the anterior communicating artery, which closes the circle of Willis anteriorly by joining the two anterior cerebral arteries. Now let's address the two largest arteries in the centre. These are the two arteries which form this whole structure, the internal carotid arteries. These begin at the carotid bifurcation on either side of your neck. And now let's mention the third and final major cerebral artery, the posterior cerebral artery. These arteries supply the occipital lobe, the inferior temporal lobe and other deep structures such as the thalamus. Occlusion of branches of the posterior cerebral arteries can result in Weber's syndrome, which is characterized by ipsilateral cranial nerve 3 palsy and contralateral weakness of the upper and lower limbs. These posterior cerebral arteries are connected to the internal carotid arteries via the posterior communicating arteries. These are important arteries as an aneurysm in the posterior communicating artery can result in a painful third nerve palsy, which is sometimes called a surgical third. Moving on to the large artery travelling down the front of the brainstem, we have the basilla artery. Due to the important brainstem structures supplied by this artery, occlusion can result in locked-in syndrome, which is characterised by complete paralysis, however has sparing of the eye movements and normal functioning cognition. At the top of the basilla artery, we have the superior cerebellar artery. It supplies blood to the superior part of the cerebellum and is one of three main cerebellar arteries. A condition called trigeminal neuralgia can result from this artery compressing on the trigeminal nerve. Off the basilla artery, we have a number of small arteries coming off at right angles which supply the pons. These are called the pontine arteries. Posteriorly and inferiorly to the pontine arteries, we have the anterior inferior cerebellar arteries. These arise from the lowest part of the basilla artery at the junction between the medulla oblongata and the pons. These are the second of the three main arteries supplying the cerebellum. They also supply the vestibular cochlea and facial nerves. Occlusion of these arteries can result in lateral pontine syndrome. Next along, we have the vertebral arteries. These are important arteries found in the neck that originate from the subclavian arteries and travel up the neck to come together to form the basilla artery. Our penultimate artery to mention is the anterior spinal artery, which can be seen here arising as two small branches near the termination of the vertebral arteries. The anterior spinal artery travels in the anterior sulcus of the spinal cord from the level of the medulla oblongata to the conus medullaris. It supplies the anterior portion of the spinal cord with blood. And finally, we have the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. This is the largest branch of the vertebral artery and the last of the three main arteries to supply blood to the cerebellum. A stroke of this artery is sometimes called Wallenberg syndrome. And there we have it, the circle of Willis, a very important arterial structure to know. They often love to test knowledge of stroke syndromes and finals, so getting to grips with these arteries and the areas that they supply should serve you well. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.